In this video, we are going to talk about digestion in humans. We will discuss the steps a carbohydrate, protein and fat take through our alimentary canal. We hope you enjoy the video and learn something from it. Keep in mind, we instantly break our substance down in whole with the first encounter it gets with an enzyme. So no leftovers after an encounter with an enzyme. Every human has to eat every day in order to survive. We all know this. For everybody, it's just very normal that you put food in your mouth and swallow it. But not a lot of people know what happens with the food after you've swallowed it, except for the smelly part at the end. We think it's time to change this. Most things you eat contain carbohydrates, fats and proteins. Carbohydrates can be found in, for example, bread, fats can be found in butter, and proteins can be found in eggs. So to keep it simple, let's use these three kinds of food as an example today. When you eat something, you first chew it to cut it into smaller pieces. During this, the fats are broken down into smaller pieces and amylase in your mouth breaks down a polysaccharide, for example, starch into smaller molecules that are called maltose. Proteins will also be chewed into smaller pieces. If you chew bread well for a certain amount of time, it will actually start to taste sweet because of the maltose. The process of chewing your food is called mechanical digestion. The process of amylase breaking down carbohydrates is called chemical digestion. After you have chewed the food, you swallow this a ball that is called a bolus. This bolus is made slippery by the mucus in your mouth. This makes it easier to let it travel down through the oesophagus. As we just told you, the bolus travels down after swallowing through the oesophagus. The oesophagus is a kind of pipe going from your mouth to your stomach. In the oesophagus, a special muscle that contract to push the food down. This movement is called peristalsis. At the end of the oesophagus is the stomach. The bolus lands in your stomach, which is digested further. The stomach contains an enzyme called pepsin, which breaks down proteins into polypeptides. The stomach is very acid. This is necessary because in this way almost all bacteria are destroyed. However, also some good bacteria are destroyed. Pepsin isn't the only enzyme in the stomach, there are of that dozens of others. The mixture of food with enzymes and mucus is called chyme. In the stomach, carbohydrates and fats won't get digested because there are no enzymes for them to find there. After the proteins have been broken down enough, which takes mostly 1 to 2 hours, the sphincter muscle at the bottom of the stomach opens and lets the chyme pass into the duodenum. In the duodenum, quite a number of new fluids and enzymes are added. The enzymes are all made by the pancreas, which is a cream-colored gland, lying just underneath the stomach. A tube called the pancreatic duct leads from the pancreas into the duodenum. The pancreatic juice, which is a fluid made by the pancreas, flows along this tube. The fluid contains several enzymes, including amylase, protease and lipase. Normally, the amylase in this juice digests the leftovers of starch, but we don't le use leftovers in this video. Trypsin is a protease, which breaks down proteins into polypeptides, but we already have all the, of the proteins broken down in this video due to the pepsin in the stomach. Before fats can get digested by the enzyme, lipase, they will have to be emulsified. The substances that are used to emulsify fats are called bile salts. Bile salts come in the duodenum through the alkaline bile, which is produced in the gallbladder. Emulsification is a type of mechanical digestion. After this, the lipase breaks down the fat droplets into fatty acids and glycerol, which can be absorbed by the lacteals in the villi of the duodenum. Villi are one millimeter long projections in the lining of the intestine, which contain lacteals and blood vessels. In the ileum, lipase completes the breakdown of leftover fats to fatty acids and glycerol, which means that these enzymes complete the digestion of food. The carbohydrate enzyme, maltase, breaks down maltose into glucose. Proteases finish, bre finish breaking down any polypeptides into amino acids. As we just told, the digestion of food is now completed.
but the molecules left behind after digestion will be used in the body after they get absorbed by the valley and lining of the ileum. Everything that's left after digestion and absorption, which is everything that can't be digested nor absorbed, moves on to the large intestine, which is made of the colon and the rectum. It first travel to, travels through the caecum, past the appendix into the colon. In humans, the caecum and appendix have no function. In the colon, more water and salts are absorbed. However, the colon absorbs much less water than the small intestine. By the time it reaches the rectum, most of the substances which can be absorbed have gone into the blood and lipids have gone through the lactyls in the villi. All that remains is indigestible food, fiber or roof, bacteria and some dead cells from the inside of the alimentary canal. This mixture from forms the feces which are passed out at intervals through the anus. This process is called egestion, or to say it in an easier way, we've come to the smelly end of digestion.